Hello and welcome to this sequence of videos on techniques of integration. So what we want to do in this sequence of videos and I want to show you is how to find the antiderivatives of some functions f of x dx. Now of course in some cases we won't be able to find it because it's not, there is no uh, analytic uh, solution uh, of the integral. So we'll go over the basic things. So before we actually start with um, talking about the integration techniques th themselves, I want to talk about the prerequisites. So, so one of the things that you should uh, know, so to be able to understand all the sequence of videos is basic differentiation techniques. So basically just uh, what you cover in calculus one. The reason for that is because in some cases we will want to uh, say that this integration rule is related with this differentiation technique. So basically know your basic differentiation techniques. And also know your basic antiderivatives. Now this sequence of videos is not about the basic antiderivatives, it's about the integration techniques. So what you do after you actually do see all the rules of integration that are related to the differentiation. Now remember the antiderivative, as the name says, is the kind of the opposite operation of differentiation. So what we'll cover in this class will be this. We'll cover uh, integration by substitution, which is usually the one that you see first in the calculus uh, classes. We'll also do integration by parts. We'll also go uh, about integration by partial fractions, integration by trigonometric substitutions, uh, half angle formula substitutions that are also very important, and a lot more. So we'll cover more, of course, more techniques here. So my plan is to cover a lot more than is actually done in the calculus classes. So we'll go over the basics and then we'll cover a little bit more. Now before I actually go into the sequence of videos, I want to give you like kind of a review because these are going to be the basic rules of integration that we will need uh, to be able to work on the, of course, more interesting ones. So the first one of this rule is if you have a constant k, which is a number like, for example, 2, 3, 4, or, or any other number, times the dx, which is the variable of integration, is going to be just the constant times uh, the variable of integration plus c. And of course, provided that k is a constant. So for example, if you have the integral of 2 dx, the integral will be 2x plus c. That's basically that the rule. Also the power rule, which is the power rule for integration. And then we have the variable to the n, uh, dx, which is the variable in this case. This works for any variable. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be x. So this is x to the n plus 1, you add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that same exponent, n plus 1. And of course, plus the constant of integration. Now, as you can see here, I'm asking n not to be negative 1. The reason for that is because if you look at the denominator here, you cannot have negative 1 because you will have a division by 0. So that's the only restriction on that rule. Now what happens if you actually have negative 1 here in the exponent? And that would be the next rule. So if you have x to the negative 1, dx or any variable, which is the same as 1 over x dx, these are two, the same integral, that's just the natural log of the absolute value of x, and that works for x not equal to 0. The reason for that is because you can have division by 0, and of course ln of 0 is uh, not a number, not a real number. So that's some three basic rules of uh, integration which are basics, and we will use them. And how do you check this are true? Well, um, you do it by doing differentiation. You differentiate, for example, kx plus c with respect to x, and you get k. Exactly the same for this one and for this one as well. And this is a general rule. Basically, what it says is if you have a sum or subtraction, the integral will distribute to each one of them as long as it is addition or subtraction. This is what the symbol here means. It's a plus or minus either one of those. And so let's review a little bit of the uh, integration uh, rules for the trigonometric functions. So the integral of sine will be negative cosine plus the integral of integration. The reason for that is because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. You see, all these rules that I'm writing down here are, are all coming from some rule of differentiation. And similar for the integral of cosine is sine. The reason for that is because the derivative of sine is cosine. So in theory, you don't actually have to memorize all these rules. If you already know your rules of differentiation, you already know the basic rules of integration or anti-differentiation. Now, same here. So the integral of secant squared x dx is tangent of x plus c. 
and the reason for that is because the derivative of tangent is secant and square. Now, this restriction that I have here, you don't have to pay too much attention to it. Basically, the reason I'm putting that there is because tangent is sine over cosine. I don't want my cosine to be zero because that would be division by zero. So I'm taking this restriction here. These are exactly the angles where cosine is equal to zero. So that's why I'm saying for except for those x's. Similar for this one, the integral or the antiderivative of c cosecant square of x dx is negative cotangent. And the reason is because the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And this restriction here is because uh, if you look at this, cotangent is the same as cosine over sine, and sine is zero exactly at these angles. So I'm just uh, considering not those angles for this formula. And similar, the integral of secant times tangent is the excess secant of x. And again, the reason is because the derivative of secant will be secant times tangent. And these angles that are here, it's just to say that's where cosine is zero. Why? Because secant is 1 over cosine. So I don't want that denominator to be 0 there. So last one uh, for the trigonometric. So this cosecant times cotangent is negative cosecant. And again, the reason is because the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times cotangent. Restriction again for when the uh, sine is equal to 0. Uh, for the inverse trigonometric function, we, all, we also need all those rules. Uh, the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 is the inverse tangent of x plus c. That doesn't have any restrictions on it. The integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared is the inverse sine of x plus c. In this case, I'm going to ask the x to be the, in absolute value less than 1. Now, the reason for that is because when you look here at this denominator in the square root, you want that to be a real number. And that actually happens when this condition is met when the absolute value of x is less than 1. And the integral of 1 over x, x squared minus 1, dx is the inverse secant of the absolute value of x plus always the constant of integration. And this restriction that is here is just basically to make sure that this expression x squared minus 1 is bigger than 0. That's because it's under the square root. I want that to be a real number. And the easiest of all, which is the integral of e to the x, is exactly the same thing, e to the x plus the constant of integration. So I wanted to do this review, and the reason for that is because these are the rules that we will use in the next video. So every time I use it, I'm actually going to recall the rule if I have to just put there the rule before I actually apply it. So this is a, a little introduction to the class, and I hope this uh, was uh, uh, helpful for you. So in the next videos, uh, in the next video, we'll actually start with the substitution technique i will use some of these rules that we see here so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video